the first thing that we're going to be doing is learning about navigation and then we're going to also be learning about navigation servers so the first thing i'm going to be going through is the setup i have so let me actually reset this and i'll redo it together so the first thing we'll take a look on the left here i have line 2d this is just to visualize the actual path that i end up using later on but code wise it's almost useless we're not going to be using it too much next up we have a character body 2d um, the character body doesn't matter too much, but it's just going to act as our player. And then we have an icon just as the sprite so we can actually see what's going on. And we have a collision shape and a navig navigation agent 2D. And then we also have the navigation region. Okay, so we have nav navigation agent. This is going to act as our point that's going to help us move around. And then we have our navigation region. This is going to essentially map out where I am able to move. So the first thing we can do is go on the top. So if we select the navigation region and if we make a new polygon and then go to the top and add points, we can add one at the top and then we can let's add it all the way to the left side of the screen. Actually, I, yeah, let's just make a square for now. Let's connect it and then let's move it. So let's move it by just dragging all of them in the middle. And then what we can do, okay, this is good enough. Let's now make a, a square around it. And what that'll do is hopefully it'll invert um, everything. So, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. So now it's inverted the square essentially. So now it's everything that's inside of here, but not inside this square, we're able to move within. So let's try that. So, well, we're not going to be able to try anything because we haven't done anything yet. We haven't added code. So let's actually uh, look to add code and then we'll see if it works. So let's add a script to our character body and it's going to be built in. Actually, it doesn't really matter. I'll make a node 2D. Uh, the default will have it as a default and have nothing in here. So let's add a few... Um, variables first. Okay, so the first thing we're going to add are two things. So we're going to add an on ready variable for the navigation region. So we're going to auto load the region and then we're also going to auto load the navigation agent. So I just called it nav instead of agent. Um, next up, we're going to auto load or not going to auto load. We're going to load a speed. It's going to be the speed of our actual player. And then we're going to actually move it. So there's, let me try to explain this in a term, in a way that will be helpful. So first we're going to be using the navigation agent tool to actually be moving along our path. So what we're going to do is we're going to move, or we're going to create a path that our player can actually move on. So to do that, it's actually really easy. It's three lines of code. Let me copy it here. So we say, we're going to say next location is equal to nav.getTargetPosition. So in order to get the target position, this is actually going to be, um, we're going to have a click. We're going to check for a click in a minute, but for now, this is going to be working, working fine. Next up, we're going to have direction, and then we're going to just direct to the position next, next location, and then we're going to normalize it. I don't think this is really necessary. It pretty much works the same, but it's okay. And then we're going to say, we're going to tell our global position to plus equal to direction times delta times speed. Okay. So this is just going to add, or this is going to basically just move us towards that point. Okay. All right. Now let me add this one, this little line of code that will actually help us find the next target. Okay. So if input dot is action pressed left click, then we're going to say nav. And, 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 and okay, we'll have to fix that later because of this. Um, but basically, if we click on the left, if we left click, we're going to set the target position to where our mouse position is. Okay, let's actually fix this now and make sure that there's no errors. So the first thing we have to check for is if the target is even reachable. Now, this will actually allow us to check if we're inside of a reachable square, right? So if we're clicking here in this region, it won't work. If we click here outside, it will work. Okay. Now, this actually would should work. So let's actually just do this and play and then see what happens. So let's play. And we move and we click. However, we get jitters. Um, and we should be able to move everywhere except for here around the middle where there is no region. In fact, let's actually add a little right to kind of visualize where that region is. It can be right there. Okay. 
Now let's go back to our script and fix this. So the way I did this, unfortunately, there's a built-in function that's something like if target reached, but for some reason that didn't really work too well. So I decided to use this other function uh, called distance to target. So I'm going to check if the distance to the target is less than or greater than one, meaning if I'm within one pixel of the target, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop moving towards it because I'm pretty much on top of the target, right? So one, one pixel won't make too much of a difference. Um, if you want to make this really accurate, you could do 0.1, but that might cause jitters. You might have to find a number that's actually that actually works. Okay. Um, okay, let's try this again. So let's play. And if I click, no more jitters. It moves to that target and it works nice. Okay. I'm not going to add the line just yet because there's a bunch of other stuff we're going to do before adding that. So the basic understanding of this is this is how we use the navigation agent to move on a path. This is almost the same as creating a path 2D and just moving to it. Or this is really similar to just moving to or moving towards a target and that's it, right? So you can just get the two positions and move towards that target, right? So that's nice. Now the problem is Let's say this is a wall. I don't want to walk through that wall. I want to be able to go around it, right? And that's not happening here. So unfortunately, this is actually a little harder than it might seem. So we have to actually do something else, and that's called navigation servers. So a navigation server will help us map out the map that we have and navigate around that. So let's get right into it. <laughs> let's delete all this we don't need this anymore so let's actually pass here and then what we'll do is we're going to start with the server setup so i'm going to copy the function here so this function is going to allow us to set up the navigation server and in this set uh function we're going to be doing a few things so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new map. This is going to be a, a virtual map that we actually create. It's just new, right? So we say map. Okay, we have to actually add the variable at the top. So um, we have to make this accessible outside the function. So let's add this here and say variable path and map. So the path will be the, the points that we enter in the path. So if I, what I want to do is I want to, if I click here, for example, and I'm at vector zero, zero, and I want to move to vector 10, 10. Now let's say there's something in the way of that vector, right? So let's say at vector five, five, there's something in the way. Now what I want to do is I want to say, okay, let's go to vector um, zero, five, and then zero, zero, 10, 10. Okay. So we'll be storing three different points in that path. Okay. Instead of two points originally, which would have been zero to 10 or zero, zero to 10, 10, right? So originally we would have just had two points from A to B. Now what we want to do is go from A, B to C, right? We want to avoid whatever's in the middle, okay? So in order to do that, we're going to create a map, a server, a navigation server. All right, so that's actually creating it. Now let's add the region to the map. So here we're going to say region is equal to navigation server dot region create. So we're going to create a region and then we're going to take our region and set the transform and then lastly, we're going to add the map into the region. And so this is, we haven't mapped anything out yet. We've just created the region and the maps. Okay. Now this is where it gets fun. Not really, but it gets fun. <laughs> so here we're going to create the navigation polygon. Now, what is that? Well, if we go to the navigation region 2D, here we can see the navigation polygon. If we hover this, it'll even tell us the property, right? And if I click it, I actually don't know why it's not showing me the points, but if I usually, when I click things, it will give me the points where these are. So it's going to basically take this polygon that we've created, right? So in our script, it's going to take that polygon, right? So we're going to load it here. I'm going to say the navigation polygon, and we're going to load it. We're going to set the region into, we're going to set the region with that polygon. Okay. So we create the polygon. We're going to make it equal to this polygon. So we're basically copying this over. We're not, we're not setting it right away. We're just copying it over. So we essentially create a copy. It's like copy paste basically. Okay. And that's it. So that's actually it for the server. So the, the setup of the navigation server. Okay. So essentially all we've done is create a virtual map where we have the navigation server or the um, navigation polygon. So we've essentially taken this 
and put it on our inner background in, in the server, so, sort to say. Okay, next up, we have to actually do things with this. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a function called update navigation path with a start and end position. So this is going to take two things, which is a start and end position. So originally we had A to B, correct? Now what we want to do is, okay, we don't want to go from A to B anymore because there's something in the way, right? Um, well, usually there'll be something in the way. Let's say there is something in the way. Now we want to go from A to B to C, okay? So to do that, we're going to say path is equal to nav navigation server dot path get map get path and this does it for us that is it that is literally it now all we have to do now is we're going to say path remove at zero because we want to remove the old path um, the path originally that we set and then we're going to set process to true okay and that's it that that is actually it because this path this is what does everything for us this this does that automatic checking for us if there's something in the way it'll say okay well, let's go to a b to c if there isn't anything in the way it's going to say okay let's just go to a to b and that's it this does everything for us we don't even have to create anything and path will become an array of points so usually it'll be three two to three points if it's f i've never seen four but you know maybe you can create some sort of thing that makes it four points okay now, let's see, we need to actually call the setup. So I've actually recently just learned this. There is a new function, not new, it's not new, but it's something I just learned called call deferred. This basically allows us to call this function and wait because this actually takes a while apparently. So it's going to call this and wait essentially before doing anything else. Okay. Now we're going to look for for input. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but I'm just going to do it like this. So we're going to say, if not event is action pressed, then return. If it is, if we are clicking left click, then we're going to update the navigation path with the position of ourself. And then we're going to get global mouse position. So we're going to essentially pass through the, the current position with the position at our mouse, right? So this is the start and end position, this point A and B. Right. And remember in here, we're going to basically make path a point, a, a array of points. OK, so if A to B is the shortest path, we're going to say, OK, A and B, that's it. So it's just two points. Now, if it's not, then it's going to say, OK, let's go from A to B to C. OK. OK. Next up, we have the process function. Let's add this guy. Let's replace the physics process with this. So. Here, we're going to say walk distance equals 100 times delta. That's just going to be the distance that we move along the path. Now we have to actually create this function. So let's do that. So let's say function move along path. Let me enter a few times. And here, this is where we're actually going to be moving. So we have the points, but we now have to move between those points. Okay. So Let's do it this way. So let's say variable. We're going to create a variable called last point and say self position. So this is going to save our previous point. Okay. Now we're going to say while path.size is existing, while it's there, we're going to start moving towards it. Okay. Now we need to create the variable, a variable with the distance between the two points. We need to know how far those two uh, points are. And there's a function inside of our navigation. Um, called distance to, or not inside our navigation, it's just a function inside Godot that exists. Okay, now we'll say, if the distance is smaller than or equal to those points, then we'll just say last, the position is equal to the last point dot lerp path zero, which is going to be vector zero usually, distance divided by distance between the points, or yeah, divide, yeah, what you just heard me say, and then we'll return, okay? And then lastly, we'll just remove the, the things from the path. So we'll say distance minus equals distance between the points. So we'll actually move towards it. And then we'll say the last point is equal to path zero. So we're going to basically move the array down and then we're going to remove the first one at zero. Okay. So we're going to start removing things from the array. Until, and then we're going to keep doing this until we reach the end of path. Okay, so we're going to keep removing it until it's it's pretty much empty. 
And then we're just going to say self dot position equals last point. Okay. All right. And then we set the process to false. Okay. Now I think that should be it. Let me just double check. Let's just try it and see if we, if we get any errors. Okay. And so we have the same thing. We move towards the point that we click. Now, if I click towards the thing, it'll go here and then there. Okay. Now let's add a line so that we can draw the points. Okay. I'm not going to, I'll, I'll copy it and then I'll explain it real quick. Where do I put it? Actually, I put it in the update. I put it right here. Okay. So when I create the path, the path is going to, let's actually print it and see what we get. So let's print path every time I click. So here I click and I get three points. If I click here, I get four, one, two, three, four points, right? So I go one, two, three. Uh, yeah. So there's a bunch of different points and we want to draw the line by basically first ignore this, ignore the clear points. We're going to for loop through the path of array, and this is going to loop through it and basically add a point to the line at every point. So we're going to add a point here. We're going to add a point here and here and here. And usually this one, the first one, the path zero is the original dot of where the player is. Okay. Well, not usually it is. That's the original um, position of where the player is, right? Because the start position here is the self dot position, right? And this is just going to clear the points because if we keep adding points to the line uh, and don't clear it, what will happen is this, right? And we don't want that. So we've got to clear it. Okay. And that's it. So we now have a nice path server or a navigation server that we can navigate around things. So if there's an obstacle in a sense, or if there's no way to navigate within here, right, we can now navigate around it. And if I click inside of it, it'll navigate to the closest point to that point, right? So this is actually something that, where is it? The, this one does map, math, map, get path. If I actually, uh, left, right click or left control, left click and click the function, it'll bring me here and it'll tell me what it does. So it returns the navigation path to reach the destination from their origin. Navigation layers is a bit mask of all region navigations that are allowed to be in the path. So yeah, it's, it's a really nice way of just helping us do this. We don't have to do anything ourselves. We don't have to calculate, okay, where do I, how, how do I get to that path? We don't have to do any of that while we could, Godot does it for us. So, um, and I think this is something new in Godot 4. I'm not hundred percent sure. So it's a really cool tool. So definitely use this if you guys are making like some sort of RTS or whatever. So that's it for this video. And I hope to see you guys next time. I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you did go subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of more tutorials on my channel, um, for Godot and hopefully more coming soon. So if you guys did definitely go subscribe and go like and share and comment on this video. If you also would like to support me, I have some Udemy courses that you should definitely check out. They'll be in the link down below that you can click on. And I also have a Patreon if you want to support me there. Um, it's totally up to you, but um, I will always be on YouTube kind of giving you guys content. So don't worry too much about that. Um, but it, it is great, greatly appreciated. I also do have some other links down below, um, including my Discord and Twitch. Sometimes I all stream games and stuff. Um, and that's it. So I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.